Hello everybody, and welcome to lesson 13.2 in the Python tutorial series. Uh, my name is Steve, and we are going to continue our look at local and global variables. Now we did kind of a short introduction to that topic in lesson 13.1, though we didn't necessarily focus so much on calling them local and global variables, it was more an introduction to how the Python visualizer works. As you can see on my screen here, I have the visualizer still open. If you don't know how to get to the Python visualizer, the link is in the description below. In addition, you can go to lesson 13.1, and in the description there's a link that will take you to the time in the video where you can follow along and get to the Python visualizer uh, along with the video. We're going to focus today on explaining the difference between local and global variables. Like I said, I know we tried to start that with 13.1, but that was far more of an introduction. I want to make sure that when you leave lesson 13.2, everybody knows the difference between a local and global variable and how they're interpreted by Python. It creates a kind of weird situation where you can have multiple variables that have the same value. While my program is running, I, ha I can have x equal 22 and x equal 4 at the exact same time. So it can get a little bit confusing, but after you see it in the visualizer, it should make a little bit more sense. And we'll move that on to lesson 14 is going to be on the time module, I believe. And lesson 15 is going to be on nested function. I think those are the two topics that we're going to do before we go on to our next uh, programming project. So let's go ahead and get started with local and global variables. So to start off, let's head over to our programming window and write a simple program that can help give an example of how local and global variables work, along with a little bit more of an explanation on, use, on user defined functions and how they execute. We're going to start by initi initializing a variable x and setting it to a value of 4, so x equals 4. We're then going to define our own function, and I'm going to call this function local variable. So I've got a function local variable that takes no parameters. And what I want to do in local variable is I want to set a variable x equal to a value of 22. I then want to print x. I want to return a value of x plus 8. And that's going to be it for the local variable function. Now what I'd like to do is run this code, because if I ran this right now, nothing would happen. Local variable would be defined, and x would be defined, but nothing is printed, nothing is called, there's no, there's no call to local variable. So let's, let's call local variable. Let's set local variable equal to a value of y, or uh, the variable y will be equal to the value of local variable. And finally, we're going to print the value of x. So this is a simple little program right here, and you know, just take a second look at it and see if you can visualize without the visualizer what's going to happen in this program. That's a pretty important skill to get to as a programmer, is being able to look at that and step through it yourself. Once you've had a chance to do that, let's copy and paste our code over to the Python visualizer and click on Visualize Execution. So this should be pretty straightforward for those of you who followed through lesson 13.1. I'm going to click forward to step my execution by one line of code, and that line of code is going to set x equal to 4. And sure enough, here in my global stack, I have a variable x set to a value of 4. I'm going to click forward again, and local variable, the function, gets defined. Remember that when you define a function, it doesn't necessarily run on its own. You have to later make a function call. All the stuff that's under local variable is there, and if I call local variable, it will execute. But right now, when Python first hits the define keyword here, all it's doing is creating local variable in the global stack so that it can be called later. And in fact, the next line of code that executes is the function call to local variable. When Python executes line number eight, it says, do we have local variable in the global frame right now? And of course we do. It's gonna run back up to line number three and say, okay, what does local variable want me to do? 
And the first thing that local variable is going to do is set x equal to a value of 22. This is where you get a huge difference between local and global variables. X just got set equal to a value of 22, but we're in the local variable frame right now. We're inside the function. In essence, my program has two X values right now. I have the X, which equals four in the global frame, and I have X equaling 22 inside my local variable function. You'll notice that setting X equal to 22 inside my function did absolutely nothing to change my X value in the global frame. When I go to print the value of x, because I'm still in this local variable function, it's going to print the local value of 22. So the program output here is 22. It's not going to print the 4 because I'm not currently executing the program in the global frame. The next thing that it's instructed to do is return the value of x plus 8, which is 30. So you can see here, I've got a return value of 30 in local variable. But here's the problem when I made my function call. I didn't set local variable equal to anything. All I did was make the function call. If I make a function call, but don't set it equal to a variable, all that information is just gonna disappear. So if you watch on the next line, we've got our local variable, um, our local variable stack here, x equals 22. It just returned a value of 30, and it all disappears on the next line. That x equals 22 doesn't exist anymore. It didn't matter that we returned a value of 30 because we didn't have it stored anywhere. In essence, with the exception of printing the value of 22, after that function ran, it, all the information it created just disappeared. Our global frame is still the exact same as it was before we executed or made the function call to local variable. We're going to make the same function call, but this time we're going to set it equal to a, a variable y goes back up to local variable, it sets x equal to 22. It still prints 22 because we're executing within the local variable function. It returns a value of 30, but now when we return this value of 30, it's instructed to store it in the variable y. And indeed, over here in the global frame, we now have a variable y set to a value of 30. So our global frame now has x equal to 4, and y equal to 30, as well as the ability to call local variable. When we print x, this line right here on line 10, it's the exact same line as line 5, print x. But because this print statement isn't in a function, it's being executed in the global frame. In the global frame, x equals 4, and our program prints 4. That's the end of the execution of the program right there. But you can see when you run your user-defined functions, everything that happens in the user-defined functions are local variables. And when the function call is over, all of those calculations, all of those variables, and all that data simply disappears. The only thing that persists is what you have the function return, and that only persists if you set it equal to a variable. All right, so go ahead and hit back on your browser and clear the Python tutorial window. Um, I've also cleared my programming window because I'm going to write another simple program here. But before I do it, um, we're going to talk about the keyword global. And I, I hesitate to teach this a little bit. In fact, I went back and forth in my head on whether or not I was going to teach this concept at all. Because in general, it is a, it's a bad habit and it's... It's, it's lazy programming and it might get you into trouble if you over rely on it. But if you're here and you're watching these videos, you probably want to learn all of programming. So I, I think it's in your best interest to learn it. But just know that as I teach this right here, there are very few instances where I would recommend using it. Normally it's bad programming form to use this keyword. But uh, the global command is something that we can use in our functions to, to impact the global stack from a function call. And let me show you what I mean. Over in our programming window, I'm going to set x equal to a value of 10 and y equal to a value of 20. I'm going to define another local variable function. And in it, I'm going to set x equal to 11 and y equal to 22 and finish by printing x and printing y. 
That will be the entirety of that function. And when I execute this program, we're going to call the local variable function. We're going to print x, and we're going to print y in our main program loop outside of, a func of any function call. And you should be able to, if you paid attention during the last five, 10 minutes, look at this code right here and visualize in your head exactly what it's going to print out and exactly what it's going to do. Let's copy and paste this code into the Python visualizer and see what happens. The first three lines are very straightforward. X is defined in the global frame, Y is defined in the global frame, and local variable gets defined as a function that can be called at a later time. And in fact, the next line, line 10, calls local variable. When local variable is called, we jump out of the global stack and into the local variable function. X and Y get defined as 11 and 22, and you can see now we have two instances of X and Y. Inside the local variable frame, it's x and y are equal to 11 and 22 respectively, but it hasn't impacted x and y in our global frame. When we print these two values, we get a 11 and 22 and a return of none. Our function doesn't have a return statement, but every function call returns a value in Python. If you don't tell Python what to return, it will always return a value of none. So in this case here, we get none returned and when the function call is over, everything's the exact same as before the function call. The local variables x and y are forgotten. The return value is forgotten. It's almost as if we never called local variable to begin with. Now when I print x, I'm in the global frame now, and it will print 10, and then print 20, and the program is done executing right there. So that's just another example of local and global variables. I'm going to hit the back button and then I'm going to go back to my programming window and I'm going to make one slight change to this program using the global keyword. I'm going to go into the local variable function that I defined and I'm going to type global x. What the global keyword does is it lets the program know or it lets this function know that when we access x in this function we want to access it in the global frame, that we don't want to create a local variable, we don't want to work with a local x, we want to work with the global x. If I make that slight change, I'll copy and paste it over into the visualizer and execute the program. The first three lines execute the exact same. I get an x value of 10, a y value of 20, and then the, the local variable function, which then gets called. It doesn't necessarily execute this in the Python visualizer. You can see it kind of looks like it skipped global x, but it really didn't. What's going to happen now? The next line sets x equal to a value of 11. When we ran this before, it created a local variable x. But when we execute this line now, after saying x is a global variable, we can see what happened is x in our global frame got changed to 11 and it did not create a local variable for x. There is no x value in our function anymore. We did not tell it that y was a global variable, so when it creates y, it creates a local version of 22 that doesn't impact y in the global frame. Now when we print x, x is still being accessed as the global variable. It will print 11 y in the local frame is 22, it'll print a value of 22, return its value of none, and now when we print x, x has been permanently altered by the local variable function, and it prints 11 again, and y is still equal to a value of 20. So that global keyword allows you to tell Python inside a function that you want to affect variables in the global frame. When I first learned how to program, my instructor, like we got into graphics and we did Pong and a spaceship game and a match three, kind of like a, a bejeweled. And when I first learned how to do this years and years ago, the instructor relied very heavily on global, on that global command and accessing global variables. And while it helped me a lot, 
it took a lot longer to break that habit. As your programs get more complicated and they have a lot of moving parts, it's very dangerous to make global changes inside a function call. And it might not make a whole lot of sense right now, but that's how the global key keyword works. If you want to play around with it, you're definitely welcome to, but it's my recommendation that you should probably stay away from it in most cases. So that's going to wrap up our uh, lesson, lesson 13.2 on local and global variables. I know it was pretty quick, and just like I said in lesson 13.1, in isolation, probably not the most exciting lessons. There is no challenge program, but we're getting very close to our next project, which I think you can have a little bit of fun with. Um, our next lesson, lesson 14, will be on the time module, and lesson 15 will be on nested functions, and the next project will follow that. Both of those should be fairly sh straightforward videos, and I think they should be shorter. In fact, the time module video could be one of the shortest videos I've done because there's not a lot to it. But I'm excited to get to the next project and make the semblance of a game with what we've learned and some of this new stuff. So if, as always, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you like the videos, go ahead and click subscribe. Anything I can do to help you guys out and get better at programming, I'd be happy to do. So until lesson 14, thanks for watching and have a great day.